Nawaz Sanjay Parekh. He's joining in, Senior Fund Manager, Equity Investments at Reliance Nippon Life Asset Management. Lovely to have you on board. Uh, thanks so much for joining in. Um, to begin with, let's just talk about what has gone on with respect to um, you know some of the NBFCs because that's really been a point of contention so far. The liquidity crunch that we've seen so far, and there seems to be a bit of a split view. Some say that the we're nowhere close to being out of the woods and that the liquidity concerns still persist, while others say that now a lot of it is behind us. You can perhaps pick out the cream of the crop within this space and look for opportunity. Where do you stand? Yes. Oh, you know, uh, I mean, on principles, uh, ownership, management and risk, you know, risk, the way risk is managed. Uh, so, you know, uh, and of course, governance. So this is important. So in NBFCs also, uh, you know, obviously those who have the right ALM mismatch, uh, ALM uh, in terms of asset side, uh, you know, the exposure is well calibrated. Uh, and uh, of course the liability side, uh, you know, they're well balanced. Uh, they certainly are better off. But as you know, some of the names, uh, there is risk. Uh, in HFC, NBFC, which is going through a pain, and it has its own impact on the entire NBFC sector. So the risk aversion is high. Even the high quality NBFCs, stroke HFCs, would have some increase in rates. Um, you know, the 10 year yield has fallen, but not the lending rates as much. So it will take a while before you know you see the good names, the high quality names in NBFC, uh, also you know looking better. But we believe that you know you have very high quality names in HFC, high quality names in consumer. Uh, you know on the auto side also there is a pain in the auto sector. But other than that, on the liability side, you're not so worried on the large NBFC. So you know it's a blend, uh, it's a process that will go through. But one has to stick to very high quality NBFC stroke HFC is our view. What about the outlook on the kind of earnings? You know, we've had quite a few trickle in so far, a lot of the heavyweights within the private banking space. How have you read into numbers that have come in so far? And, you know, what is your assessment? Yeah, so let's break this. Uh, let's take the three large corporate banks. Uh, you've seen one of them coming in. Um, so there, you're very clearly confident that uh, you are seeing them getting the market share. Uh, they have a liability franchise which is strong. Uh, the growth uh, on the retail side uh, in some segment is lower, but by and large we think retail growth will be benign. I mean, generally looking better. You know, there could be one or two percent lower than normal expectation. Uh, and you know, NIMS have been very stable. Uh, the operating leverage is kicking in and asset quality is significantly better. So we think this trend will remain for this year and significantly will look better for the next year. Uh, the large private retail banks with less asset quality problem, we've seen some lower credit growth in a lead bank, but we don't read too much into it. It's led by auto, which is at times proactive. And instead of having problems later on asset quality front, it's better to slow down growth and which is very natural. So if it doesn't grow at 21%, but 17, 18%, we feel it's absolutely okay. So we feel the three large private sector banks with less asset quality problem, there as well, there's an opportunity on market share, the liability franchise is very strong. Uh, so that's where we believe, uh, you know, this year, in fact, the large contribution to earnings growth, even factoring the recent slowdown, will be contributed by the six large banks three in corporate space and three in private bank with less pain. Almost 60% of the earnings growth contribution of this year, we believe, will come from these banks. So, and these banks will look far better in 21. And as I said, the liability franchise is good. They are gaining market share. On the asset side, you know, the asset quality, you know, the recognition is over. Uh, you know, you'll see significantly lower credit cost this year and far better next year and hence higher ROAs and ROEs. And in a falling interest rate environment, you know, you also get such banks re-rated purely on price to book for the, you know, lower interest rates. 
So we are positive on these banks over next three years. Do you expect credit growth to pick up as well? You know, give us a give us a sense of really what you're anticipating on that side. Yeah, so, you know, uh, of course, the credit growth uh, has slowed down. Uh, the retail credit has slowed down, uh, led largely through pockets of uh, auto uh, and, uh, and certain other segments. Uh, even, uh, you know, on the corporate side, uh, uh, there is private capex formation is least. It is more of working capital led growth or credit growth from the government space. Uh, so, we are seeing slowdown in credit growth. Um, normally, credit growth is 1.5 times of nominal GDP. Uh, if you take nominal GDP at 10-11%, credit growth should be 15% plus. We are not seeing that. We are seeing more like 11-12% growth. Uh, we believe that uh, it will be a you know, case of two halves in a sense, few larger names will have good credit growth in terms of market share gains uh, but the, the lower tier PSU banks will certainly see uh, less credit growth uh, and those who have issues on the liability side will also be constrained. So uh, you will see select banks benefiting, the larger ones uh, and uh, but overall credit growth we believe uh, will slowly take off as the economy revives. And, uh, you know, the economy will take time. Uh, uh, monsoon has now got better. Uh, we have coming, I mean, the busy season is coming ahead. Uh, but we believe that it will be a slow and gradual recovery. Uh, and it will be a slow U-shaped recovery rather than a V-shaped recovery. So in that light, Sanjay, highlight for us, what are the banks of interest for investors? Because it seemed like, you know, the market is heavily skewed towards the top corporate banking names. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, one thing is if you take the, we don't get into names, but if you take Bank Nifty as an index from almost 31,700, we are now at 29,300. Uh, and the composition of these, the large six names is almost 90%. Uh, and they have been fairly resilient uh, and for the right reasons. So we believe that, uh, you know, you could see one or 2% risk, a little more maybe. But, uh, you know, they've reacted quite well for the concerns on the system, banking system, um, be it the NBFC-led asset quality pain getting, uh, you know, uh, getting more pervasive or the slowdown in the economy, uh, you know. So, so those issues have been hanging on the sector. We've seen good amount of reaction. We, we believe that there's a very clear opportunity uh, to look at this segment, uh, uh, you know, uh, with a risk of maybe 2-3% over the next 2-3 years. The risk return, we believe, is very favorable from here. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, uh, Sanjay, and taking us through your views uh, when it comes to those financials.